In 2015, Kevin Whitaker, an Ontario Superior Court judge, took up painting and drawing after being diagnosed with an aggressive form of Parkinson's called Lewy Body Dementia, or DLB. The area that I sort of noticed first was um, my sense of balance, uh, especially at night. Uh, I wouldn't able to be able to sort of walk down the street without looking like I was stumbling a bit. Rightly so, physicians are reluctant to run to a, di a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or um, um, Lewy body disease because it, the, the consequences of being uh, um, diagnosed in this fashion uh, has a serious way on how other people view you in the world and it also um, puts you in a different sort of category of uh, what kind of treatment uh, you need on a, long, on a very long and ongoing basis. Kevin's response to this degenerative disease was to paint, prolifically resulting in his exhibit, Chasing Monsters. Two years ago, Kevin needed a walker and was becoming lethargic. Today, his hallucinations have reduced and his energy increased. Could it be that the psychological boost from his exhibit is responsible for such significant physical and emotional improvement? I was born uh, in 1957 in uh, the city of Toronto, uh, at Toronto Western Hospital. And uh, my parents were quite young at the time. I think my dad was 18 and my mother was 20. Uh, so I was uh, the first serious kind of responsibility they'd ever had in their life. And, they, and the three of us lived a happy little existence in a basement apartment off uh, Vaughan Road in uh, North Toronto. Years earlier, when Kevin's father was hospitalized, the emotions he felt were so powerful that while driving home from hospital visits, he was rage-filled. Painting was a way for his body to power down and focus on just one thing. For Kevin, it was, and still is, an incredible stress releaser. Acrylic, on a wood panel. The only way you'd be able to distinguish between the regular Parkinson's and Lewy bodies is, is following an autopsy. There is no test known uh, which, will, which can be used while the person is still alive. There's a small area of, of cells in the back of just behind the center of your, your neck, uh, which are the um, cells that distinguish the Lewy body from the regular Parkinson's diseases. Parkinson's uh, has globs of protein, uh, which are um, just randomly, for whatever reason, grow in certain positions or places in the brain, whereas Lewy body is uh, sort of a centralized. Uh, it seems to me that the most significant difference is one of cognitive uh, abilities. I have more of a cognitive problem, and they have more of a motor problem than I have. It's fairly well known that, uh, that the Lewy body side to this sort of larger um, disorder uh, includes hallucinations and uh, different types of hallucinations. So I had prepared myself for that as much as anyone can and um, uh, did as much reading on it as I could so that when it happened, I'd be able to identify it and we could do whatever we need to do to, to lessen the impact if that's possible. The first type of, of um, hallucination that I had was one where um, you're, you're walking or riding your bike down a road and all of a sudden, you see a sort of a flash, light, flash of light here at the very far end of your um, scope of vision. And turn around, and on what I would see is something that looked like a, sort of a, a tall flame that was about five feet high, running along beside me, but able, able to spurt and move much faster than I could. And I, I think this is common. I, I didn't want to say to myself, well, this is obviously hallucination, and you better get some ther therapy of some sort, either medication or... And uh, I put it off and put it off and put it off because I didn't want to deal with it. And some days I would not have that appearance at all. You, th you think that you're in, uh, in a sort of a real life moment, not a hallucinogenic moment. 
Um, and uh, at that point, I decided that I'd tell Marie that this is what's going on. And uh, I, I think she sort of anticipated that, the sort of um, place that we're heading. It's a lot of presence of these uh, hallucinated individuals. And uh, certainly I understand in my mind when I see them walking by my bed or pushing me through the doorway. I don't, I, I don't actually interact with them that I can feel them. But I have an occasion when I'm tired and I'm not thinking clearly. I've tried to push the person that I'm trying to get by out of the, out of the doorway and they dissolve. I just don't, you get, it's, it's very, um, uh, it's very unsettling and it's, uh, you don't feel comfortable and safe. Kevin W. V. Whitaker, Barrister at Law at the City of Toronto in the province of Ontario. At some point I raised with my colleagues at the court of, uh, Superior Court of Ontario, what it, my situation was, my medical situation was. And I knew that this disease was um, terminal and I knew that uh, uh, there, there really had, had not been cases where there was any kind of relapse. So um, I knew that at some point uh, my conduct would be changed or altered, that uh, I simply in good conscience couldn't, couldn't continue with uh, and provide uh, to my colleagues, to the public, um, the quality of the level of service that I held myself to. Uh, I, I might not be the best judge of when that point is, re is reached. So I said to my colleagues, please help me. And if you have any sense that I'm having some difficulty meeting your expectations or the expectations of the parties, let me know, please. Um, and uh, that was a very hard thing to do um, for a variety of reasons. Firstly, probably it is, a, for me anyways, you know, the most interesting type of work you could possibly do as a judge. I found sort of early on, uh, after my diagnosis, that I would need something more in my life to um, do some form of public service. Art for me assists me in understanding the content of what it is that I'm, my brain is obviously trying to sort of give meaning to. Um, I'm very keen on the use of eyes, drawing eyes and looking at eyes and thinking how they reflect what's going on behind them. I, I practiced eye, eye drawing a fair bit and uh, I, I like to use it to sort of um, decode some of the things that I presume I have, I have written uh, into this type of picture. I often will do a, a strange or a, um, different count uh, of uh, the, ears, the eyes that I use in my paintings, just because I think it gives people a jolt and uh, you sit up and pay more attention if you've got something that uh, just sort of hits you out of the side and uh, uh, is uh, different enough from your everyday li living experience that um, you know, you're, it, it encourages um, inquiry. Before was a show, these paintings started less than three months ago the ones that are the big paintings in the show. So what was amazing was to watch him gravitate to a huge canvas, which was not something he'd ever explored. And that came very much out of him walking by a huge canvas when we were in California and saying, I'd love to paint on something that big. And when you live with someone whose life expectancy is shortened and you want to bring as much life to every day, that's a wish. So I really said, oh my gosh, here we are thousands of miles away. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. And then he did the first canvas, and then he did the second canvas, and then he did the third canvas. And I thought, oh my gosh, how are we gonna get these home? And we took them off the canvases, we rolled them up, brought them back to Canada, and then our wonderful neighbor reframed them. And then my best friend came over and she said, I think I know where you could have a show. And here we were less than five weeks after coming back from California with this focus. It was like a rush, like it's just been a constant 
source of joy for him and it's given me a sense of purpose to be able to support his journey at the stage of the disease. So years ago, and it wasn't that long ago, I guess two years ago when we knew the disease was really looking ugly and he had to stop working, he was not the same man he is today. He was actually much less uh, present, much less engaged. I have two possible names for this. One is Flowers, and the other one is Van Gogh's Back Nine. A number of so-called California uh, drafts are just loaded with, saturated with color. It's not that I did not use color before, uh, because I did, but um, I hadn't really sort of established it as, as you know, the, the number one primary ordering principle. So I found myself in, in you know, a backyard in, in uh, Santa Barbara and uh, just beautiful scenery and the ocean and the sun and the, and the sky are, are just so strikingly charged with, with uh, raw color. For me anyways, it's, it's hard to uh, not pay attention to it. According to the U.S. 2006 case study in LBD and creativity, even though there was a gradual degradation of the ability to visually express artistic subject matter, novel approaches to painting improved. The preserved ability to paint novel pictures is related to relative preservation of frontal lobe function. There's a lot of very small uh, movement down at the bottom. It looks like there's... Uh, the black lines down below are, in, in my view, the orchestra. These, this is the choir that follows the antagonists around the different scenes in your mind people who might belong to an orchestra, black suits, white collars, um, tabs, uh, instruments, uh, supporting this heavy skull with th at least three uh, bulbous eyes uh, cast out towards this, mo this unexplainable entity, a, mon a monster. Um, and at the very top of that, you see a... a, a um, an entity that looks as if it's a cross. The use of color and shape uh, in my work is, I think, um, a much more significant f feature of it than um, uh, perhaps more sort of technical graphic realism. I think that that is to assist me in trying to make some sense of my world that doesn't involve uh, cognitive analysis. The Santa Barbara paintings were the inspiration for Kevin to continue public service. And so he and Marie, his wife, mounted the exhibit, Chasing Monsters, with all of the proceeds donated to Parkinson's. You know, we still, we still don't have a medication where that can be used as a fail-safe um, weapon of last resort. Research and writing, and then uh, clinical uh, testing, uh, and then presumably at some point um, uh, some type of uh, medication or, or a set of pharmacological tools that could be used to, to provide some respite from the day-to-day -day, uh, pain and sort of ongoing trauma. This work and the attention that it has given him and the sense of purpose that it's given both of us has remade him. It has really given him a second life. And the images, as grim as they may seem, really have changed how he sees the world in real time. He doesn't have as many hallucinations. And I know that he was on the same medication, so there hasn't been a significant change that I can attribute it to other than the huge creative process and the sense of just joy and pain that he's getting out of his system. And now, both with medication and a real sense of purpose, he can be on the treadmill singing at the top of his lungs, just killing it. Got to be somebody's baby. One of the consequences of, of uh having to sort of resign my position as a judge. 
So I've got a, a, a much greater extension of my ability to sort of travel places and, and do things which, which require time and effort and just simply the ability to focus on something and, and think about it and talk to people about it who are interested. And so in this, in, in my life, Marie and I are able to, when we need to, um, pack up our bags and go to some faraway place and turn the phone off and just sit and look at the sky and, um, and uh, feel, feel the breathing of the person you're with and, uh, um, and to appreciate the love and the tremendous commitment that my wife brought to the, to the process. And it requires some serious thinking about how you, you feel about your role in the universe and uh, how it fits into the needs of others. While most neurodegenerative disorder patients typically become artistically unskilled as the disease progresses, Kevin, in contrast, has not only achieved new artistic expression, but as well the drive to continue producing a prolific body of work. As the extent of cognitive decline intensifies, particularly in areas of language, it appears that new or improved creativity emerges. Kevin's body of work, Chasing Monsters, is indeed a remarkable example of the transformative powers of artistic expression in patients with neurodegenerative diseases.